What's up guys, Lisa here of Borderlands Bakery here today and we are going to be making the ultra trendy hot cocoa bomb. Now the hot cocoa bomb was first introduced by Kate Weiser, I believe. She had something called Carl the Snowman. It was basically like this oversized hot chocolate bomb in the shape of a snowman. And it came out years ago, but only in the last year did the trend really, really take off and now everybody is making them. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you my method. There are a lot of things you can do to make hot cocoa bombs, tons of different techniques and molds. This is just one way, and you're only in limited by your imagination. So once you get the basics down, you can start filling them with whatever you want, not just hot cocoa, but like matcha latte or strawberry milk, and you can start decorating them in more fancy ways to make it ultra fun. So let's jump right into it. And if you love our content, definitely smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you can keep supporting us and we can keep creating content like this for everybody. All right, friends, so here is what we're going to need to make our hot cocoa bombs today. This is my way. There are an infinite ways. So I'm using some leftover chocolate that I had used about a week ago. This is my Nerdy Nummies chocolate warmer. It ensures that your chocolate is melted but doesn't get too hot so that it burns. Love this, love this, love this. If you're making a lot of cocoa bombs, this is so worth it. It's only 25 bucks. I will include the link in my blog post. I've got some sprinkles here from Sweeta Polita. These are my favorite fancy sprinkles. Um, I have a link for these guys as well where you can save 10%. And I've got some Wilton ones from Michaels. We have our cocoa mix. Of course, you can also make your own. I'm actually gonna be adding some non-dairy creamer in here because I want people to just be able to add hot water without using extra milk or anything like that and it'll still be very delicious and rich. Of course, you need your hot cocoa bomb molds. This was a six piece. I'm gonna show you a picture of what it looks like right here. And I simply cut these up because it's easier for me to work with them one on one or one at a time instead of all six at once. It just gives me better control of the chocolate. Same thing here. I would say that if you had a choice to pick your colors, pick not brown because if you're gonna be doing any like actual like chocolate stuff, it blends in with the mold and it's really hard to tell if you have any gaps in your mold. I've got some marshmallows here, some cute heart strawberry ones, regular minis, and then these Lucky Charmed ones. I find that if I only have minis in my hot cocoa bombs, they melt really fast, so I wanted some bigger ones to kind of balance it out. Lastly, I've got packaging things. So I put them in standard cupcake liners. By the way, these are two and a half inches. They fit beautifully in these guys and these are from Target. Really, really cute. And then I also have some packaging from Target. So I believe these are gonna be able to fit four hot cocoa bombs and we're gonna assemble them all and we will see shortly how all this works out. Now the type of chocolate that you use will affect how your hot cocoa bombs are gonna come out. For the easiest way, a lot of people like to use candy coating. So you've got stuff like the candy melts or the A peels from Guitar, or you've got the Merkins melts, or you can even use almond bark. They all work for that candy shell. It might be a little bit oilier after you put in the hot water or hot milk to dissolve, but that really hasn't bothered anyone, so we're good. You can also use regular chocolate chips, but you do have to temper that chocolate if you're gonna be using it, making sure that it stays within a certain temperature so you don't burn it. And if you're going to be using one of these, our chocolate melters, I like to keep it on the low setting to make sure that it doesn't burn. It's still really easy to work with and it'll be warm enough to ensure that we can get it all around nicely coated on the molds. A quick note about the molds. So there are various type of molds out there on the market. I will link all the various types in my blog post and talk to them and give you kind of the pros and cons. But real quick, um, these are the most accessible molds. Everyone's making hot chocolate bombs right now and you can still get these on Amazon. 
there are these three-piece molds where it's kind of a one-step instead of a two-step where you just pour mold and unmold this one you have two steps um, but those molds are always out of stock but I will link them for you anyway and the method is slightly different so I will also link you to resources on how to use those molds in the blog post anyway these molds come in hearts they come in like rectangles anything like that as long as you can piece two sides bits I don't know sections parts together you're good to go um, a lot of people like the giant ones these are two and a half inches they are good for one serving usually if you get the bigger ones maybe they can be two servings or you can stack a couple of them together to make various shapes people can also decorate these however they like there are heart shapes there are like unicorn shapes of frog shapes if you're into Harry Potter anything is possible you just have to use a little bit of your imagination all right so i've had this sitting here for about five minutes now and you can see that it is really melting nicely i used a combination of semi-sweet chocolate chips and some um uh merkins melting chocolate like uh, wafers the round stuff because that's what I had on hand and I've never had a problem mixing regular chocolate and the coating chocolate so should be okay I'm waiting for all the bits to melt and then I'm going to be using a spoon to transfer it into my mold And almost you can see it's almost fully melted keep it on low now take your mold here's the thing wash this very well with hot water and then immediately dry it otherwise you're gonna end up with streaks and you're gonna see it on the surface of your chocolate no fun you do want to make sure that your molds are fully dry and streak free before using them. So you want to use something that's lint free and does not hang on to fibers or hairs, anything like that. We offer these awesome cellulose biodegradable, reusable, basically paper towels in our shop. Check it out, borderlandsbakery.com slash shop. And they are awesome for getting your molds totally clean, streak free, lint free. So I like to, after I wash them with hot water, clean it with this guy to pull off any excess watermarks or anything like that and just let it dry. You want this slightly damp, not too wet or else you're just gonna be getting your mold wet and that defeats the purpose of that streak-free finish. So clean off your mold, let it air dry for a couple minutes. I'm gonna grab one that I've already cleaned off and let's get started with molding your shells. All right, so we've got our mold here and I like to start around the perimeter. So I'm gonna grab some of this chocolate and using my spoon, getting it a little bit over the edge is actually okay because you're going to be warming the edges up to seal the, the, the sides together. And I'm simply using my spoon to get it up to the edge. And we're gonna have to do two layers because we want that edge part to be very strong. And you wanna make sure you don't have any um, parts of the mold peeking out. And I will show you after we go around fully one time how we're going to fill up all the gaps. So keep turning. And if you have too much chocolate, we're just gonna scoop it out, so no worries. And you can see how I'm purposely getting it a little bit over the edge. Now, I'm gonna kind of just tap it firmly. And let's clean this up. So these are so awesome. They just clean things up so well. And you can wash them and reuse them and throw them in your washing machine get this out of the way though and yeah I like to shake it and have it nicely coated 
And because they're silicone, you can kind of press on the back to kind of give it a good jiggle. This also helps release any air bubbles that may have been trapped and just swirl it around. You can kind of see some of that chocolate kind of ooze that excess chocolate. And you can get your spoon to give you a little bit of an assist if you need to maneuver your chocolate anywhere. And just like that, everything is fully coated, looks homogenous. We're gonna set this in the fridge for a couple of minutes until it sets. If you've got a pool of chocolate on the bottom, too much of it, you can just scoop it out and put it back into your warming pot. All right. So this first layer is critical because you're making that nice base for it. Scooping out more excess and because of that gravity and the tapping, the extra chocolate is going to pull at the bottom, which is exactly what we want. And we're cleaning it up a little. All right, put this in the fridge. Back in a couple minutes. All right, so this guy came out of the fridge. You can tell that by tapping on it that it's pretty solid. It's got a couple of small air bubbles, no big deal, but what we're going to do is add another layer of chocolate to the rim to kind of double it up and make that uh, rim stronger so that it doesn't break when we adhere the two pieces together. Now you can't have your chocolate too hot for this part or else it's going to um, melt right through the first layer, which it might do a little bit of anyway because it's warm chocolate. But basically the same thing here, you're going to use significantly less chocolate than you did the first time around and you want to keep it as toward the rim as you possibly can. Just want to thicken that part up. Make sure your chocolate is not super hot again. Shake off the excess. Be very careful about how much chocolate you use. You're gonna end up with a ton of chocolate. You can scoop some out carefully. All right, I wanna show you something. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but right there, you can see the mold poking through. That means we gotta add a little chocolate in there or tap it so that it covers it just like that. And I'm gonna try to scoop more chocolate out because we don't need that much on the bottom portions. Be very careful because your spoon is warm, the chocolate is warm, everything is warm. Anything it touches can potentially melt. Now we're gonna put this back in the fridge, sitting up just like this. Use something to prop it up if needed and wait for it to fully cool. One of the other things that I like to do for the second layer is I actually like to put them upside down so that the excess chocolate could fall and uh, pull kind of towards the bottom, allowing for a more um, thick rim. So letting it bleh, cool upside down seems to help with a stronger rim. Another tip, don't worry too much about what the inside looks like because it's gonna melt anyway. And yeah, uh, if it's a little ugly, it's not gonna be a big deal, right? I think this is my most hated part about these molds. And the three part molds are better in this area because it gives you a pretty um, even shell thickness. And all you gotta do is do this one time again the three-part mold and any instructional videos I will include in my blog post, which is in the description box below. I wanna show you guys another way of getting that edge on and it's using a piping bag. So you would pipe along the edge and a little bit outside of it is okay too, but I feel like this is a little cleaner of a, of a method if you've got piping bags. And it'll kind of reduce how much chocolate you'll end up using for that chocolate, that second layer. And then now you're just gonna kind of get it around and down just a tad. And we're still gonna do the same thing. We're gonna flip it upside down. 
and we're going to let it cool upside down in the fridge. A side note, our bags are microwavable in short bursts on medium to medium high. Don't go all the way high. And what you want to do, especially if you're doing chocolate, is put it into a cup so that it stands up and you're not laying it on its side. That way the chocolate does not ooze out. And just 30 second bursts at a medium to help get your chocolate melted down when it's still in the piping bag. I want to show you quickly um, what this looks like when it's kind of air dried, a little bit streaky, versus what happens when you clean off any excess bits with our so less cellulose eco towels. You can really ensure that each part of your mold is clean. And now you don't have any streaks or anything like that. And no fibers. It's beautiful. I just grabbed these guys out of the fridge. They are very cool to the touch. I'm gonna let them just come down um, to a, a little bit more closer to room temperature before unmolding them. And then you'll see how they look. They'll be shiny. They won't have any like weird streaks on them or anything like that. In the meantime, I'm gonna go prep and um, put one of the, my pots on the stove and warm it up so that we can get ready to um, clean up the edges and assemble them. I've got a pan on the stove. I haven't turned it on yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on low and just let it sit there for a few minutes. All we need is just the tiniest bit of heat to melt the edges of the bum and then we it'll be enough. So I'm going to turn it on, let it um, get warm for a couple minutes and turn it back off. All right, so these have been sitting for a couple of minutes out of the fridge and I want to show you the easiest way I know of to unmold them um, using these molds. I just press down in the center and I try to touch the chocolate as little as possible so I don't leave fingerprints or anything like that. Press down firmly and then peel back. And that should release really nicely. You didn't have to touch the chocolate at all and you can see how easily it released. You can clean that off later. You want to wash this before you use it again or else your chocolate may not come out as shiny because there's already um, uh, uh, oils and cocoa butter on it. So we're gonna do that with the rest of them. Unmold them. Look at how pretty you guys. And a lot of you are gonna ask, so I'm using a, um, ooh, chocolate. If you find any chocolate, throw it back in or eat it. Uh, this is a web restaurant tray. It can actually fit 12 cocoa bomb uh, shells on it and it's great for a 12 pack. So I will also leave the link in my blog post below. I'm gonna finish demolding the rest of these. And if they get a little stuck, just gently nudge them and they should pop right off. Just like that. And look how pretty they are. Nice, smooth, and very shiny. We're gonna move uh, over uh, to our stove top to get these uh, cleaned up and filled. All right, so this is warm. I'm turning it off and I'm using a glove on one hand to minimize the amount of fingerprints that I'm going to get on my chocolate. I've got a cupcake liner ready here. And all I'm going to do is you have to move a little quick here. You're gonna take one half of your shell Gently twist it, chocolate's gonna melt, and then we're going to put it right on our cupcake liner, being sure not to handle it too much or else you're gonna leave prints on your shell. We're only going to do half the shells like this, and then we will um, put the others, fill them with our hot cocoa and marshmallows, and then we're going to do this to the other side and seal it up. So I'm gonna do that for the rest of my hot cocoa bombs. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see more of what's going on. So I've got some chocolate on my glove here. Just make sure you clean it off and dry off your glove so that you're not getting condensation or water on chocolate. Water and chocolate do not mix. Gentle turn until just it just melts. Pick it up, put it in here. Ooh, I've got a little, a little guy that's um, 
I don't know if you can see, but it is, oh, you can see a little gap there. That's gonna be not as structurally strong, but I think with the rim that's pretty thick, it'll still be okay. So in the future, I really gotta watch out for gaps like that. So we're only doing three, right? Again, clean off your fingers if you've gotten chocolate on them and make sure you dry your glove as well. And then here's the last one. Oh, let's make sure, oh God, oh God, okay. It's okay, we'll save it. We will still use this one even though it is a little less perfect. You can use that as a top shell and drizzle over it to hide it or we're just gonna pretend that that's fine the way it is. Now we're gonna fill them up. Everyone's got like a different sweetness level or creaminess level that they prefer. Um, when I first posted these on TikTok a while back, people were like, oh my God, you're using water? And that's because I don't like putting more milk into my hot chocolate, but more so it's because I already use non-dairy creamer in my mix to eliminate having to use milk. So just using water, you're still gonna get a very rich, very creamy hot chocolate. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a half, excuse me, pack of the Swiss Miss dark chocolate cocoa mix. And I'm actually only using half because you don't really need like a lot of cocoa mix because you've got a chocolate shell as well. So half pack of that, uh, about a teaspoon and a half of non-dairy creamer, and then as much marshmallows as you desire. And we're gonna do some Lucky Charms in here. All right, after we've um, filled our hot cocoa bombs, now we're ready to assemble. And we're going to basically kind of melt the, the, the edges of the other um, half and use that melted chocolate as glue to hold the two sides together. This part's gonna take some practice, it can take some time, but just be patient with yourself. we melt down the bits and you want a nice clean edge you don't want to touch it more than you have to I'm already leaving some warm fingerprints here but it's not a huge deal because we will cover it up and set it aside to let it kind of uh, solidify so we'll do that again I just cracked one of these, but it's okay. I just put my finger through there. This was one of our very um, uh, not structurally sound edges. I just ate that marshmallow, but it'll be okay. It'll survive. And our last one here, be gentle. stick together quite well. And now we're gonna decorate and package them. Right, the easiest way to decorate these is to drizzle and then adhere some sprinkles on top. So what I've got here is I've got a cup and then I have one of the piping bags. These are awesome, we supply these in our shop and we also use them in our cookie decorating. I'm just simply fitting my bag. Oh, I bumped the hot cocoa bomb and it survived. Okay, so I'm fitting my bag into the cup and then I'm going to pour some of that leftover chocolate in here. This is still pretty warm. I've kept it on the, um, the warmer. And I'm just adding some in here. Give it a couple minutes so that it comes down to temperature. Otherwise it's too hot and actually might 
destroy or melt the shell on your bomb. So just let it come down in temp a little bit and then we'll drizzle. If you're feeling it and it's really, really hot, just let it come down in temp, trust me. Set this aside for about a minute and it will be less hot. We will drizzle and immediately after drizzling, we're going to put some sprinkles on here. All right, so I've got a piping bag here. I tri trimmed off the excess so that it's not flapping everywhere and I'm just gonna cut a hole in it, about a millimeter. I don't want too little drizzling to come out, not too much, you might have to play with the hole size. And we're just going to drizzle across the top, not too much. We're just going for a little decoration here, nothing crazy. And you wanna do about three at a time or else um, the chocolate starts to dry and you won't be able to adhere it as well. So I'm just going to pour some sprinkles out on my palm over here and just simply throw it on. And this is where sprinkles shine, guys. So pull out those cute sprinkles. Again, mine are from Sweeta Polita. They are adorable and delicious. So those are, those are that. And then if you wanna add some edible glitter or anything like that, now is the time. Adding some more stars, I mean not stars, hearts on here for a little bit more um, cuteness. And just like that, your hot cocoa bombs are done. Just want to show you guys what happens when your chocolate is too hot and you drizzle it over your hot chocolate bomb. That happens. It breaks. Boo. For this next one, I'm starting out with white almond bark and I'm going to add some pink candy melts in here to make it like a, a baby pink kind of color. And then I'm also going to throw in some little mini heart sprinkles in here so that the shells will look a little speckled. We'll see how it turns out. So if you want a more marbled look, you can kind of melt your different candy melts kind of on one side and the other side one color and just scoop it in this way and see how that turns out. I'm gonna do one experimentally to see if I like it. I think it's gonna come out really cool. I've seen people do um, marbled cocoa bombs before, so that's what's going on here. Again, this is almond bark and candy melts. So not straight white chocolate or anything. Not today, anyway. All right, so I did a couple with just a marble and now I'm gonna add in some sprinkles and just see how that turns out. This is my first time doing any add-ins and I don't need it like crazy mixed in. Oh, you know what? I should have done non-perials because this is not going to be visible. I can already tell, so there you go. Learning process live right here. Pretty chunky. That's okay. All right, this is our pink one. Oh my god, that's so cute. Look at how cute this is. That marbled pink. All right, so I'm taking one of our fan brushes. We have these available in the shop as well. And I'm just going to put some gold on here and swipe. Oops. 
swipe across. How cute is that, you guys? Very simple, very cute. Maybe you can do some gold foil or something and that'll look great as well. So I'm also going to be packaging them like this. Super cute. This is that Target packaging. All right, so to package them up, I've got my little box from Target. It fits four cupcakes, which is perfect for the two and a half inch cocoa bombs. And I am simply going to place them into the box. And then we will close it up. It just occurred to me that I don't know how this box works, but that's cool. We'll figure it out together. So cute, you guys. Put a tag on it with directions on how to use the cocoa bomb. And that's it. So cute.